afternoon, my name is Kieran and today I'll be presenting on the parameterization of thermal electrochemical models for lithium-ion batteries. This talk will cover the relevance of modelling in battery research and the importance of accurately measuring parameters to create robust models. My research will describe the methodology that we have developed here at the University of Birmingham to parameterize a physics-based model, the doyle fuller newman model. And then lastly, I will mention how the parameters we have measured for a cylindrical 21700 cell can be accessed in an open source software for the modeling community to use in their own research. The cell we chose to parameterize was the LGM50 because it's been designed specifically for automotive applications. And the Doyle for the new model is underpinned by many equations which describe mass and charge conservation within the electrodes and electrolyte. So we have to evaluate each of the input parameters for these equations in order to be able to predict battery behavior. And predicting battery behavior allows us to measure the voltage and temperature profiles of a battery using an input current. And modeling is a powerful tool because it allows us to predict battery behavior in many different operating conditions without conducting very resource intensive experiments. And it also has the added bonus of allowing us to explore the effects of parameters on the performance of a cell, for example, thickness, without changing these in the manufacturing stages. Physics-based models allow us to observe the internal states of a battery, but this fidelity comes at a price. As you can see, we have to measure many parameters that describe the physical, chemical, electrochemical and thermal properties of a battery and its components. The methodology we have developed covers the elucidation of all these properties and it is a very multidisciplinary effort because the properties can be elucidated using electrochemistry, imaging and thermal characterization. This methodology has been developed to be agnostic to chemistry and format, so it can be applied to different batteries. And as I said before, we've chosen a automotive cell to be relevant to industry and academia. And within this parameterization, we have tried to map the dependencies of these parameters on, on the lithium concentration and temperature, because these parameters are not static throughout the operation of the battery. And by mapping these parameters, it means we are able to document the dynamic behavior of a battery and predict the battery behavior more accurately. Within parameterization, there are five main stages. Firstly, we have to do a cell teardown in a glove box to minimize any chemical contamination of the cell components. Secondly, we have to extract the electrodes and components within the cell in a safe manner, but also attempting to minimize any mechanical damage to these components, because any damage ultimately affects the parameter values we measure. Third, we have to elucidate the parameters using a plethora of different techniques. To name a few, we use potential stats and battery testers to deconvolute some of the electrochemical information. This includes open circuit voltages and electrostoichiometries. Next, we use microscopes to measure or evaluate the chemical composition of the active materials, but also the particle radiuses of materials within the electrodes. We also use thermal chambers to cycle these batteries under different temperatures to deconvolute some of the thermal information. This is only a snapshot of the techniques we use, which demonstrates how complicated parameterization can be. And after we've completely parameterized the model, we can use the model to predict battery behavior in different operating conditions and compare this with real experimental data from the cylindrical cell. After we carry this out, we are expecting some disagreement when we compare the predicted and measured battery performance. And this is largely because the techniques we use for parameterization are not perfect and they all have their own caveats. It's very difficult to measure 
the properties of a cell perfectly when, especially for a commercial cell, there is a lot that is not known about its chemical makeup. Let's highlight some of the key results from the thermal electrochemical model parameterization. And as I said, these parameters aren't exclusively limited to the thermal and electrochemical properties. We have to determine the chemical composition of the active materials because this information is used in evaluating some of the other parameters. For the anode, this was determined to be a mixture of graphite doped with silicon to increase the energy density, and the cathode was determined to be a nickel-rich NMC material. We also have to outline the anatomy of the cell because it's the tab locations and the cell layout which govern how heat is dissipated throughout the cell. Next, we have to measure the lithium concentrations, the electrodes cycle through in the full cell because they don't cycle through the entire stoichiometric range of the electrodes. And we need to know these exact ranges because the lithium concentration determines the, some of the properties, including diffusivity, which you can see on the right hand side, which changes significantly as a function of both lithium concentration and temperature. And just measuring these parameters is only one part of parameterization because for the modeling, we have to sometimes find functions that describe, say, how diffusion changes as a function of concentration and temperature. And functions are preferable in comparison to using interpolants for the actual model parameterization because they reduce the computational expense and make the model more robust. And lastly, we have to deconvolute some of the thermal information, which describes how the active materials in the anode and cathode dissipate heat throughout the cell. And this is described by the thermal diffusivity and conductivity. And these change as a function of temperature. So as you can see, the battery is very dynamic and we need to map these parameter dependencies within the cell. This research was done in collaboration with Fran from WMG and parameterization is a very multidisciplinary undertaking because you need an in-depth knowledge of the techniques used to measure the parameters, but also very good knowledge of the underlying model and how these parameters can be defined mathematically and incorporated into a model. So for this purpose, Fran used PyBAM, and this is an open source software which has been developed for physics-based models, including the doyle fuller new model, and it allows modelers to access these parameters very easily and use them with only a few lines of code, as you can see here. And in terms of the mismatch between our measured and simulated battery performance, we attributed some of this disagreement to be due to the initial choice of using constant parameters, but we expect there to be an improvement when we start to move away from using constant parameters to documenting the dynamic behaviour of the battery and how these parameters depend on both concentration and temperature. A methodology to parameterise a physics-based model has been a massive undertaking and because of that there is a wider effort within the multi-scale modelling project to offer parameterization as a service to the UK battery industry. And this will cover both equivalent circuit models and physics-based models. And in the latter case, we are predicting that industry in some applications would prefer to use physics-based models because of the extra fidelity talked about earlier. So if you operate in the UK battery industry and you're interested in accessing some of the parameterization expertise we have developed in this project, please reach out to some of the people within the multi-scale modeling project or directly to me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you for listening to my presentation. To quickly wrap up, today I've described a methodology to parameterize a physics-based thermal or electrochemical model for a 21700 lithium ion battery. And one of the main aims of this parameterization was that it was agnostic to both chemistry and format, so it can be used on pretty much any battery. Another point was to map the dependencies of these parameters on lithium concentration and temperature to improve model accuracy by mapping the dynamic behavior of the battery during its operation, because these parameters significantly depend on temperature and lithium concentration. 
Lastly, we have made these parameters publicly accessible in PyBAM so that researchers can easily access them and simulate batch behavior using a physics-based model with only a few lines of code. And this will be an evolving data set as we come to add more of these parameters describing new behaviors of the battery. To date, we have added the electrochemical part of the model and its parameters, and more information can be found in our recently published paper in the Journal of Electrochemical Society. Soon, we will be publishing the parameters that describe the thermal component of this model, which I've spoken about today. And in the next year or so, we will be working on deconvoluting some of the parameters that describe the aging and the faded mechanisms within the cylindrical cell itself. Listen to my presentation and if you have any questions, please direct them to me or submit them via the panel on one of these platforms. Thank you.